Are you actually athletic? We're gonna give you the best way to analyze athletic assessment, and we're gonna start, right? No! So what is an assessment? What we're gonna be looking for are those KPIs, key performance indicators, and these are gonna be very similar across all athletics. And I know a lot of coaches and athletes might be sitting there going, the KPIs, how are they gonna be similar for you know, a swimmer and for someone like a wrestler or somebody like a football player? But they are, because what we do is we break down, okay, where can the successes be in this assessment? Where are these athletes gonna be more prone to injuries? What twitch type do they have? And even what type of athlete they are. So we like to do this athlete typing here at Garage Strength, the athlete reactive analysis where we break down their personality and their structure and all these things. So really, if we know that Twitch type, we can then see, are they gonna be better as an explosive athlete or an endurance athlete? And what are the specifics that we're gonna be assessing now? We're gonna be going over mobility, Twitch type, endurance, structural balance. So seeing side to side, how is that athlete built? How are they actually moving? How are their mechanics from the left side to the right side? And then finally, that athlete type, how are they taking cues? Do they communicate to you? Do they talk a lot? Do they not talk a lot? Do they tell you all their life problems or not? Those are the main things that we're gonna be going over in this specific assessment. Okay, so we're here with Anna McElderry, one of the best weightlifters in the entire world. She's clean and jerked 125 kilos, and she snatched 102, 102 kilos. So that's almost 225 pounds, actually that is, I think that is 225 pounds. So the first test that we're gonna do is gonna be mobility specific. Now, this is gonna be specific to performance. If you wanna get tested by a professional, find someone like the mobility doc to test you and actually break down every precise aspect of mobility. I do recommend doing that, but you can use this if you don't have access to a professional. What we can do now is Anna's gonna establish that overhead squat position. So she knows where she's gonna put her grips with a technique stick. We actually have knurling on there that you can put your fingers uh, based off the rings. I would recommend going about two fifths above with the individual, with the athlete, for where their grip would be, or setting that bar here and then slowly moving your hands out until the bar raises into that hip crease. So now, that's the first step. We establish that grip. The second step is, I'm gonna say, Anna, put the bar overhead, and I'm gonna do a minimal amount of instruction. Just put it up over your head. Second thing that I want you to do is, as a, as a coach or an athlete, you can start with your feet here. So this is their pulling stance. Don't really tell them that yet, though and just go a little bit wider than shoulder width. That's good. Okay, so the only thing that I wanna do now is see the athlete squat. So if somebody comes into your gym, or if you're an athlete and you wanna do this, and they walk through garage strength here, we sort of just throw them right to the wolves with minimal instruction because that broadcasts us how they think, how they process cues, how they go about doing things. They might start to ask a lot of questions or they just do it without asking a lot of questions and that's gonna feed into your athlete typing, your athlete reactive analysis. So put it back overhead. Now I wanna see this squat because this is how we're gonna analyze that mobility. You could see right off the bat, Anna tried to turn her feet. She wanted to move her feet because she wasn't comfortable with where she was and she came forward on that. So right away I can say, she doesn't like something around her ankles with that tight upper back. Now she hasn't warmed up, she came forward a little bit. Do that again, give me two more. Forward, heels popping, and the heels popping still a little bit more. Give me two more. Okay, one more. Good, okay, so what I want to see is those heels stay down and she has a little bit more of an upright chest, okay? And I don't wanna see this come forward at all. So what that tells us is mobility wise, Maybe she's a little less stable in her upper back, a little tight in those ankles. Now what we can do is we can take that, we're gonna get a power elastic band, so we're gonna use our mobility band, okay? I'm gonna have Anna slide the technique stick through here, but we wanna keep this outside of your hand. So like, you can put the, the technique stick through, keep the band on the outside, and then when she does her overhead squat, she's actually gonna have more tension. Got it? So here here and then set your feet so that it doesn't fly up and hit you right in the face, although that would be funny, especially if we filmed it in slow-mo and we could put it on YouTube and roast you. you now go overhead. Good, okay, now squat. Okay, she's a little more upright. Give me even a little bit more. Okay, three more. And the whole thing that I like to do here is go, all right, at the top, she's here. Now what's happening with the band? And how's the band tension here? Now squat. She sort of moves forward, okay? Give me two more. So it's a real simple eye test. This is something that you can do. Okay, good. 
This is something that you can do right away with any athlete that walks into your gym or if you're an athlete, you can do this stuff and film yourself and say, all right, my ankles started to warm up a little bit more. I was hitting deeper positions, but I'm still coming forward a little bit at the bottom of the snatch or at the bottom of the overhead squat. And even if you don't do snatches, if you struggle with the mobility to get into the bottom, you can see our, my lower back's tight. Maybe I have a little bit of that butt wink or I'm dumping my chest. And the reason why I'm dumping my chest is because I have poor ankle mobility, so I have to go forward with this position. So you can see a lot of different feedback, but keep it simple. Don't go crazy with it. Just say, all right, I was a little tight in my ankles, a little tight in my upper back. That's stuff that I can work on. Or with that athlete, that's something that we can work on as we progress through their training system. Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna do is test a little bit more of unilateral mobility. So one of the best parts about testing, okay, and assessing athletes, and I think one of the main reasons why we're so successful here is that we don't let this paralyze us. We don't sit there and think about it over and over and over again. When somebody comes into our doors, we're testing them and putting them through essentially this workout on their first day, and then we're rolling right after that. A lot of coaches might spend a week or two weeks going through this assessment, and they're not getting work done. Okay, yes, this is important to test people, but it's important to do that in practicality, especially if you're trying to make money. If you're trying to make money and bring a lot of people in your door and get them better, you've got to start training right away. So now, just wanted to rant on that. We're gonna do the split squat here. We're gonna come down, again, minimal amount of coaching. Okay, minimal amount of coaching. Stay upright, go forward, keep that heel down, and drive back up. Give me five each side, Anna. See if you can extend that right knee more. So even there, how Anna just moved her foot, I had said extend your right knee. She decided to move that foot back. That's something that you can sort of place inside your brain and just be aware of. I would like to see that knee go a little bit more in front of her. There you go, right like that, good. Okay, one more like that. Okay, good, now switch. Now I don't wanna see that, see if, see if you can do this left side without that left knee touching but still having that knee extension and you're traveling forward. So a little bit, you can go forward a little more. There you go. Okay, a little more upright and more tension through your heel as the knee travels forward. Good, okay, two more. One more. Okay, good, so that tells us a little bit about what's going on with her hips. She's a little tight, but not terribly tight but even just making that correction and it's like, all right, so how does she handle that cue of I want that knee extension? Instead of extending the knee, she sort of compromises a little bit by moving that foot position. And it doesn't mean that that's good or bad. It just means that you have to log that for when you start to train them. Now, the next thing I wanna see here, single leg, touch like this, come back up, okay? Touch here, come back up. Twist that left arm up to here. More twist. Yes, like that. Higher twist, two more. See if you, good, okay, now the right side. And again, the big thing here is minimal coaching. Just let them do this. So you can get that right a little higher. Of course I said that and then I coach her. Okay, so she did just put that left down. She's a little bit less stable on the right side. Twist more, oh, so we're starting to see some things get exposed and, and this is happening on her second time of doing this test. So if she does her left leg first, she's learning the test. So now she gets to her right side, she should know that test a little bit better. Now a good example would be myself. I just did the left side, right? I know deep down inside that my right side has a little bit of a problem. So if I do that test, you can see me twist. I actually did not even mean to do that on purpose. But what that tells me is it broadcasts to me as a coach, when Anna's doing something like a step up or a single leg squat, I'm probably gonna have her do her right leg first, okay? So it's just keeping that in mind. And then when we're putting in things like rotation, if we have somebody who's a field sport athlete and we wanna talk about rotation and change a direction, if Anna was a field hockey player, a lacrosse player, a football player, anything like that, we have to be aware that that might show up when we're doing that in training. We've got to cue them and then teach them as to why that's important to improve their change of direction and focus on that dynamic trunk control. So remember, a lot of our assessment that we do here at Garage Strength is inside of that first workout. So if Anna just walked through the front door, she would be doing either a leg day or an upper body day. And we do these assessments on that training day. So we would be saying, hey, we're gonna do dumbbell bench and I'm gonna give her a minimal amount of cues. Now, 
She is a world-class athlete, so I know some of her peculiarities. I know how she moves a little bit, but I'm gonna show you here, just having Anna come back and do a dumbbell bench, how you can then see her twitch type and even her shoulder strength relative to her tricep strength. So let's go, Anna, no warm up. let's see it. Okay, give me eight. Two more. Okay, good. Okay, so key lessons, okay? Take notes from what I just saw. Anna comes back and she just presses, okay? She didn't do a stretch shortening cycle to get it up, okay? That's the first big cue. She just does a strict press. So as she gets heavier, she might not know how to recruit with that stretch shortening cycle as she gets heavier with those dumbbell benches, okay? So if we had a normal athlete, a football player, you know, baseball player, anybody, and we want them to do dumbbell bench, we have to be aware that we can teach them that stretch shortening cycle. So that also is gonna trigger some of my thought when we get into our jumps. She might struggle with that, possibly, okay? The other thing is, it's around six, seven, eight reps, her elbows started to come in, okay? So that means her triceps are a little bit stronger than her shoulders. So she started to just come in a little bit, wasn't crazy, but if we did three or four sets, I'm certain by the third and fourth set, we're gonna see those triceps really come in and she's gonna be benching like this, okay? So that's also where we can then be aware when we're building the program going, hey guys, all right, so this is what happened with this individual. Her elbows started to come in, so that means we need to cater some of our accessories to her shoulders, and that's exactly what we did inside of our app, Peak Strength. When we programmed it, we taught the AI inside of Peak Strength to learn how you're adapting to different things and how you're adapting with the different loads, and then the program throughout that periodization can then improve those specific weaknesses. So if you want that, pick up Peak Strength at peakstrength.app. Now on to the next assessment. Okay, so what the other tests showed us is in a split squat, that unilateral rotation, that shows us some issues with structural integrity. Now what we're gonna look for is we're gonna try and figure out the twitch type of the athlete. I'm not gonna say anything to a brand new athlete that comes in and trains with us. Even the world-class athletes that come in and show up, we're gonna run them through this because I just wanna see how they react and how they handle things. So. We have about a 20 inch box, okay? And, it, and you can use 16 to 20 inches. That's usually pretty good for figuring this out. Anna, jump on the box. Okay, now Anna, jump down and jump back up. Okay, so two things before she does another one. I said jump down and jump back up. So Anna took a step down and then jumped back up. So now I have to log that. Okay, so when I'm doing this with cues, I need to be more precise on my cues with this individual, which is also accurate. I need to do a better job with her cues when she's snatching so she doesn't miss her snatches forward. So that is one way that you have to assess your relationship is, okay, now I have to communicate a little bit clearer. Okay, jump up, Anna. Gosh, I hate your arm swings there. That's another big thing there is that Anna sort of jumps like this. Use your freaking arms, but now here's the next one. I want you to jump off, land, and jump back on right away. Okay, one more. Okay, good. Now, a couple of things that you can see here is you can see how they cycle. Okay, so some athletes will cycle really well. Some athletes will cycle not really well. Uh, some athletes will be terrible and not jump with their arms at all. So Anna's not terrible with that. The other thing that we can see then is how long is the ground contact? Okay, if it's super twitchy right away, and Anna's not bad, uh, she could be a little bit quicker on that reaction. Another thing that we could see that Anna didn't do, let me demonstrate here, is that if I have somebody jump up here and I tell them to jump right away and they do that, they take like a step backwards or they jump up and they go that little hop. So what that tells us with their twitch type is that they're not reacting quick enough. So then it's like, all right, well they didn't react quick enough and you can play this game inside of your brain they're not reacting fast enough. Now I'm gonna give them a cue. So if I give them a cue and they do it, then you understand how they learn. If they don't need that cue, then they probably, as you progress as their coach, they'll need less and less cues to execute what you want. You can really meet with athletes beforehand and say, hey, this is the goal of today's training session, and they'll get it done the way you want. And with other athletes, you might have to be more expressive and, and more clear with the means of execution. So that's what all these tests are telling you. Uh, and that assessment here is that twitch type test. It's very, very simple. You can also use steps. All right, so we're fortunate enough that we have like the perfect stair height here. 
at garage strength. Most people can get this in three to four jumps. Again, when you're doing the test, minimal communication. Just say a very blanket statement. Anna, jump with two legs in as few jumps to get to the top and then take mental notes. You can have a paper that you write on. That's what we use when we bring people in. We're writing things down and assessing everything. So then when we program, we have that all laid out and scripted for their future. So jump up the steps, Anna. Okay, five jumps. Now, that was her first time, so I won't make fun of her too much. But there's a couple big factors here. Her cycling is in front of her. She lands, I think there were some potholes on the steps. <laughs> so we have to be aware of what, you know, how that landing is, is it really soft? Is it really loud? It wasn't as loud as it could be, and I'm just making fun of Anna here. She's also jumping in weightlifting shoes, but that's another factor. Now we wanna teach, hey, I want you to have an arm swing and land a little bit lighter on your feet. You give one or two cues, and then you see how that athlete reacts, because you might have an athlete, now Anna's very coachable. Anna will just say, all right, I'll try it, I'll do it. You know, whatever, I'll do it. You might have an athlete that says, well, you know, I didn't warm up today, and when I was driving here, somebody cut me off, and I just want you to know, like, Three weeks ago on you know a quarter moon, I had a really bad day when I was doing stair jumps and now it's having a mental effect on me today. And that actually happens with some athletes and then you can tell right there, all right, I know what type of athlete they are. They're telling me all their life problems and I don't care. So now we know what type of athlete they are. Now, Anna's gonna do this again one more time and we're gonna try and learn from this the second time. Okay, that was a little better. That was better. She, it was also the second time doing the test, so she did get better at that just from learning. But then another thing that you can do is, Anna didn't ask me any questions. Some athletes will just go. Some athletes, again, will tell you all their life story like I just shared. And then some athletes might say like, all right, so you want me to just work on this? And they might say one cue back to you. And then that's something that you just put in your back pocket when you're instructing them in the future. You know, hey, if I just give them a cue and then they bring it back to me, they're paying attention, okay? They're paying attention and they're learning. So that's another good factor behind this assessment. So the whole goal is that you can take all these things, you can do it today, but then you can also put other individuals through this test and it can give you a whole bunch of feedback which should help you build out a program or you can just pick up peak strength. Another simple test is you can go, all right, let's do a five rep max on a back squat. Uh, and this is if the athlete's a little bit more advanced. You don't want to do this with a kid who's 10 years old and he walks in the door. You want to do the box test. So what I would do then with a the back squat is I'd say, okay, let's do a five rep max. Let's say they do 100 kilos, five rep max. So that should be about 80% of their best. So what we can then do is we can either go down to 10 reps, okay, and see where that percentage is relative to 80, or we can go for a max. And then we can see, all right, if they max out at 120, well, 80% of 120 is that five rep max, so they're pretty twitchy. And then the higher that max would go relative to that 100 kilos, then the more explosive we know that they are as individuals. The closer that is, the less fast twitch they are. So the closer you are to your five rep max, that means that you're not as twitchy. And then what that tells you as a coach or as an athlete who's doing the assessment is that's where you can cater your programming. Again, this is exactly what we did inside of Peak Strength when we were laying out that periodization is learning those different ratios for all these assessments to help improve our overall programming. It's two minutes, you're gonna puke everywhere. Okay, so what we're gonna get into now is endurance work. And there's a couple different ways that you can do an endurance assessment. I like to do either you get on the assault bike and you do two minutes straight and try and hold an RPM that's already pre-planned, okay? Now, with somebody like Anna or someone who's a field sport athlete, I typically would have them come in and we would do like two or three sets of exercises in a row, so like a superset or a triset. And if we do a superset or a triset, we can see how many sets it takes until they start to lose their form or until they say like they're dying or until they look like they're dying and they actually aren't saying anything because that's another factor that feeds into that athlete reactive analysis. And so that helps us then learn how that individual is wired. It helps us learn what their endurance capacity is. And if they're in a sport that needs power endurance, it teaches us how hard we actually have to train that characteristic. Now with Anna, she's a weightlifter. She doesn't need a ton of endurance outside of strength endurance. We're gonna do this assault bike 
50 RPMs for two straight minutes, and I have a really good idea of how many calories that would lead to. I also have an idea that 50 RPMs might be a little bit high for two minutes with Anna because she doesn't do any endurance work at all. But now we're gonna dive into that, so Anna's gonna get on the bike, two minutes, 50 RPMs. And for athletes out there, if you guys want to improve your overall recovery and your overall sports performance, make sure you check out today's video sponsor, EarthFed Muscle. EarthFed Muscle has some of the best supplements, the cleanest supplements on the planet, and to perform at a really high level, you need to make sure your nutrition is optimal. That's why I love recommending EarthFed Muscle's EarthFed Armor. It's high in vitamin C. It also has vitamin D. It's a pivotal point to dealing with your overall recovery and the stresses that you have throughout your everyday life. I recommend taking EarthFed Armor every single morning. Again, it's got zinc in there as well. This is a great mineral if you're a strength athlete, if you're a distance runner, if you're doing endurance work, like Anna is right now. You can take this every single day with the utmost confidence. EarthFed Muscle sponsors dozens of athletes that are tested by USADA and WADA. Head over to earthfedmuscle.com slash free for a free 30-day trial of EarthFed Armor to get a free bottle today and start boosting that immune system so you can crush your day. Now, speaking of endurance, let's go back and check what Anna's doing on the assault bike. Okay, so a couple of key factors behind the test is that uh, Anna, I'll press stop here, so that would, that would give us some, a better report. You can see here, RPM average is 47. So when you're looking at the test, that was your peak was 52. You can look at the test when you hit stop and see, I came over here and Anna was at 45 RPMs, not 50 RPMs. So that's a pretty good example of what is her endurance level, okay? You tell somebody the test and that's what makes the assault bike great. They're not sponsoring this video, EarthFed Muscle is. Don't forget, you can pick up EarthFed Armor today and take that every single morning, three pills. If I want someone to perform at a high degree, I'm gonna say, hit this 50 RPMs, two straight minutes, and if they can't hold that, and I come over and I say, well, they're under 50 RPMs, that's gonna tell us that's something that we need to work on if that's part of their sport, okay? If that's part of their sport assessment. If it's not, it could be something that we just do once in a while, maybe in a GPP phase, if we're in the exposure phase, we can plan that out a little bit more effectively. In Anna's case, this was a decent test. It's something that's fun. It does have a little bit of information that we can provide as far as moving forward with her weightlifting career, but it's not anything that's gonna be detrimental or even something that's gonna be like that low hanging fruit. So you can use this test to show you how quickly someone might break down with their technique, with their form, or if someone is more geared towards that endurance. If I came over and Anna was doing 60 RPMs for two minutes, I might take a step back and realize maybe Anna's in the wrong sport and she should be a cross country runner but clearly that's not the case. So keep the assessment simple. What did we do? We went through very specific things like an overhead squat, split squat, unilateral positions with a rotation. That told us a lot about her structurally. Then we went into that twitch type and how she responds to those box jumps. And we even thought about that dumbbell bench. What is that showing us with her triceps in relation to her shoulders? We did the stair jumps to see how quickly she reacts. I provided one or two cues to see what her reaction was gonna be. And then finally we finished up with some simple testing on the endurance bike or on the assault bike. So keep it simple and learn from that information. Don't let it stall out all of your training. Don't let it impede upon your growth as a business either. That's one of the big errors that I see with gym owners is they spend weeks testing people, and then we can do that in a matter of 30 to 40 minutes, and then you start to grow from that relationship. You start to see how well you have to communicate with certain people or the methods that you communicate with individuals, and then that helps you make more progress. And we talk about this, and we talk about all this information inside of our sweet podcast that can help you with your brain gains, masters of sport. If you wanna be part of this periodization and this knowledge, click on the link down below and head over to peakstrength.app and pick up our app today to help you become a freak athlete. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you always have to cultivate your power. Peace. <laughs> Great job, Anna.